Hey y'all, today we're gonna sub some socks. So stick around. Hey everybody and welcome. My name is Roy and today we're going to talk about sublimating socks. And they're so stinking cute. Yeah, I said stinking and socks. Socks are a wonderful product to offer your customers. Uh, and there are a couple of reasons. One, they really are adorable. And two, not as many people have them. Uh, the market's not as oversaturated as tumblers. Uh, and you don't always see socks when you go to a craft show or an event or even online. So I wanted to do this video on socks because I used to sell them quite a bit in my shop. And for some reason I just slowed down and I, I didn't replace them. And about three months ago, two months ago, I'm like, you know what? I need to put some more socks in there. So I ordered some socks and um, put them in there and they're, they're going pretty fast. I'm selling probably six, eight, 10 pair a week. And it's not a huge profit, but the profit margin is pretty good. So we're going to talk about that in a minute. I have a Facebook group and in that group, uh, Alexis actually uh, mentioned uh, that this past weekend she had a very uneventful vendor event. And she said that there were about 10 other vendors selling t-shirts and tumblers. That's a lot. And I don't know if you've done events or not. Um, a really good event will only allow one or two vendors that sell a specific thing, say candles. You only have maybe a couple of people that sell candles. The same with tumblers. That's not always enforced or followed by event organizers, which is unfortunate. Now you want to set a price point uh, when you're selling tumblers in an event. And I don't want, I don't want to sidetrack into this being an event video, but um, really quickly charge what they're worth because uh, I've been to events before and had um, other vendors have great tumblers, but I've also been where the vendors haven't had um, the best quality. And so I'm not going to lower my price. I'm going to have a great product. I'm going to have um, hopefully a unique design on that tumbler, and I'm going to stick to the price that I think it's worth. And that might vary depending on the demographic, uh, depending on the location, depending on how big the event's going to be, depending on how much they advertise, all kinds of, of, of factors like that. But at the end of the day, sometimes there are too many uh, uh, tumbler sellers. And so uh, one of the things that Alexis asked was um, she needed to find something else to make um, that'll set her apart or at least offer something because there are so many. Well, the cool thing about socks is it is something else. Oftentimes people don't include socks and it's a different price point. So I might be in an event that, uh, is, that people are buying, but there are gonna be a percentage of people that don't wanna spend 25 or 30 or $35 on a tumbler, but they'll certainly spend 10 or $12 on a really cute pair of socks. So let's talk about socks. Um, I have been a Silky Socks fan since I got into sublimation. As a matter of fact, a few years back, maybe three years back now, um, when I got into it personally, I had done it a little bit through um, my work uh, or had been involved from a, merchan a merchandising standpoint. Anyway, I um, uh, wanted face masks. So I found Silky Socks and got masks and then realized, wait a minute, they have socks and they have these things called no-show socks. So I bought those and, um, and I sold them quite well. I think I was selling them for like 14, 15 bucks a pair at the time and they were selling well. So I want to always do things as inexpensively as possible and I want my profit margin to be as wide as possible. So I will tell you that for a while I said, you know what? I'm not going to pay the Silky Socks price, which isn't much. We'll get into that in a minute. I went to family dollar and got these socks. I think they were seven bucks or eight bucks for uh, 12 pair. And um, I was kind of excited because it came down to about 68 cents a pair as opposed to the silky socks, which uh, at the time I think were $2. They're now $2.50 a pair. I'm like, well, that's a huge savings. Trust me, do not do it. Go directly to silky socks. And let me explain why. First off, these things come um, there is a, um, the little plastic piece that's in here. I've probably cut 5% of them 
uh, or or um, pulled the the pulled the fabric and about five percent of them and had to throw away. And they're very very cheap, thin, thin quality. And then I got to press them. You'd have to press them. So what did I do? I started making templates because you got to have a template, right? So I have like a whole bunch of templates that I tried to make. Some of these were from Silky Socks, um, and then I just tried to expand on it. Here's one. That, yes, it's not a, well, anyway, it's a template. Here are some inserts. Literally, I was going through trying to get the exact size on these. And here's the problem. From an insert standpoint, it has to be wide enough so that the sublimation ink presses in enough fabric that when you put it on your feet, it doesn't stretch it out. Because if you press that sock and it's not stretched any at all, and then you go and stretch it on your big ass foot, I shouldn't say that, and then you go and stretch it on your foot, it's going to not look nearly as good. So you have to have uh, an insert. And this was just a pain in the ass trying to get it wide enough that it would pull at certain spots, but not too wide. And so the other challenge, this is one of those pair, is this right here would just be all cattywampus. It would be all messed up. Um, see how the back is like that? I could not get them to fit well. So probably a third to a quarter of them that I'd press. I mean, imagine pressing on that. Probably a third or a fourth of them I had to throw away or just wear. And so um, then I had to package them. Now, Silky Socks, they come with an insert already in. They come with the packaging with the little uh, M for medium or L for large or whatever. So what I had to do, I had to go buy me some plastic sleeves, some bags that were long enough to put socks in, right? And then I had to get me these little teeny labels and type M or L on them and stick them on there. Where'd it go? Stick them on this so it looked nice and professional like this. You're talking about by the time I bought these, by the time I made these, and then I never did. I never did get the inserts right. It drove me batty. Here's a, a few that I tried. They just, look, you can tell they didn't work. So I tell you that because you might get the idea, you know, I can find socks at Dollar Tree or I can find socks at Family Dollars where these came from. Don't get them. I don't even like wearing them. I ended up wearing some of them. They're so, so crazy thin. So let's get to silky socks for a moment. I'm very disorganized here. Let's get the silky socks. So the price of silky socks is $3.50 for a pair if you get one, one pair. If you get 12 pair, it drops it from $3.50 a pair to $2.50 a pair pretty substantial savings. And if you spend $150, you get free shipping. Now, I was talking to uh, Kelly uh, Scoville uh, in the Facebook group as well, and she had a really valid point. Uh, you know, if you buy two or three of them, you're paying $350 a piece, and you're paying a lot on shipping. And that is not uh, the fault of Silky Socks so much as it is our um, uh, you, uh, postal service. And I think these might have come FedEx. Yeah, these came FedEx. Anyway. Um, you can talk all day long about shipping prices, but, um, but it was a substantial amount. I think that um, I went back and looked, and if I got a dozen socks, uh, a dozen pair, um, it was going to cost me $15.15 .15 to ship to Central Florida. I'm not sure where they're from. They're in California. So, Kelly, very, very valid point. It's kind of pricey. Here's what I would suggest. Because... I bought these, these socks I bought $150 worth. Um, here's a box I'm getting ready to open. So I got them for $250 a piece. And um, I, don't, I, I don't have the math in front of me, but I think it was like $700 profit that I'm gonna make off of them. $750, something like that. I sell them for $12.50 a piece. But if you buy $150 worth at $250 a piece, uh, you're gonna be able to sell them, even if you only sold them for $9. You got $2.50 for the socks, 14, 15 cents for the paper, probably another 10, 15 cents for 
the inks, let's round up to $3. So you got $3 in them. So if you sold them for nine bucks, that's still three times profit. Uh, $10 is a little bit extra. I sell them for $12.50. Uh, so it really depends on where you are, what your um, uh, market will allow for that. But, um, but you can at the very least get $9 for them. I would, I would suggest, highly suggest, that you don't sell them for less than 10 because you're not going for a pair of socks that people can buy at, uh, at Target or Walmart. You're buying a very fun, cute pair of socks, which by the way, I'll talk about this a little bit more uh, later on, but I've just dropped 20, 30 or so different um, files, uh, sock files into my uh, design website and there will be a link in the description. Um, a whole bunch of solid colors and um, well, here, I've printed a whole bunch out. So we've got uh, several different camouflage colors. We've got uh, solid colors, uh, nice little cool rainbow color there. Um, pink camo, that's cute. Red, always a great one. Great seller of mine. These are great. So anyway, um, I have a bunch of designs uh, on sale and I've got them grouped into, into um, uh, uh, little groups of files, like I think it's six solid colors. Um, and each of the files, um, each of the files in my, on my website includes a small, medium, and large sized four silky socks of each design. So anyway, um, so where were we? So let's open them up real quick. This isn't an unboxing video, but we do want to, oh, <laughs> FedEx for you right there. So I'm guessing that they're okay because when they, when you buy them, uh, as, as a dozen, they're pre-packaged. So I'm pretty sure... Ow! Just kidding. Pretty sure that they'll be fine. All right, here's my little bill. They always come with a little sticker. It's adorable. They have instructions here. And then they come... Here, let me set this off to the side. They come in packages of 12, uh, 12 pair, with the, um, uh, with the plastic um, packaging uh, and already labeled. So in this shipment, I think I got 12, 24, 36, 36 medium, oh, 36 medium and uh, 24 pair of smalls, because I think I got 24 pair of larges last time, so I've got a few of those left. They're pretty fast on shipping too. They send you these too, little, little pushy, pushy thing. They have different ones. I think I got a, a red shark last time. Anyway, you have directions for all of the things that they, uh, that they sell. I'm trying not to make this a Silky Socks commercial, but I gotta tell you, they're the ones to go to. Everything is done for you. When we go to press, I'll show you what we're talking about. Um, but these things right here, don't get them. All right, where are we? So what I do is I take the, I don't have a scissor with me, so I'll have to do them a little bit, but I cut these out and I cut them out like this. And the reason that I do that is it's very easy when I've got the, the socks on the platen like this, it's very easy for me to take the, thing and lay it perfectly down on each one. So a lot of people will just lay them down on the, on the paper and not cut it. I take the extra 30 seconds or so to cut it. And here's another big trick. When you cut them, if you do cut them like I do, they'll, they'll want to bow up the opposite way and it's a little bit difficult to keep them. So I'll cut them all and then take a, a handy dandy uh, towel a paper towel roll and stick them in the paper towel roll for a couple of hours. Uh, and guess what? That makes them very easy to lay onto the sock. This is going to be a senior class of 2023. We'll press that one as well. Anyway, I love silky socks. They make everything easy. Uh, one thing that I wanted to mention that I did tell Kelly in the Facebook post, if you're unsure, $150 is a lot of money to, to, to toss out if you're unsure. Here's what I would do. I, let's see, let me look and see. Get this exactly right. Okay, so get a dozen of them. If you get a dozen of them, 
and get one size. I'd get medium to start off with. That's probably the, 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 the best size if you're only gonna get one. I would get a dozen mediums. So that goes from $3.50 each to $2.50 each. Now, if you're going to ship them to Central Florida, you're gonna pay $15.15. .15. So I am imagining that it is not gonna be more anywhere between uh, California and where you live. Okay, so if you add that $15 into the price of the socks, uh, you're gonna pay a total of $45.15, 30 bucks for the socks and 15, 15 for the, the shipping. So $45.15 for a dozen socks, which is a bit pricey. That comes out to $3.76. So you figure maybe, well, figure 50 cents worth of, of paper and ink, 75 cents. So $4 is what you got in, $4.50 that you have into them. Let's say you have $5 into them. So you're going to be able to sell. If you can sell, if you're selling sublimation products, you're going to be able to sell 12 pair, right? It might take a little bit of time, but if you sell them for $9, you've made $4 profit. Is that a good profit? No, it's not a good profit, but it's not a loss and it's a chance for you. It's an opportunity for you to be able to see if it's something that you would want to carry. If you sell sublimation products and your area is not oversaturated with these, you're gonna wanna get them because they're a great, great, great price point um, for uh, potential customers. So, and a lot of people put things on the bottom of them. I don't, uh, partly because it just takes more time, but, um, and, and I just wanna put some cute socks out and, and sell them and make three or four or five times what I, I got into them. I also, when I put them in the bags, I put them like this, so you wouldn't really be able to see the, the, the backs of them. Anyway, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna cut some more of these out and we will go to the heat press and uh, press a few, and then we'll come back. I'll show you how I, package them for selling, and we'll have a few final thoughts. So let's go to the heat press. We are at the heat press. The first thing I need to do is put a piece of paper down on this platen, and I actually made this paper roller a couple of years ago, and I might have made a video on, on how I made this. I'll go back and look. A couple of masks that I made for some folks, if you know who they are, let me know in the comment section. We are going to put this paper on here. Probably should have cut it a little bit better, huh? And we're gonna take some copy paper and put down just to make sure nothing bleeds through, which nothing's gonna bleed through because we're not doing the bottom. Anyway, we wanna take our two pieces, always use a lint roller because you're gonna get little bits and pieces uh, and you want to make sure that those uh, little bits of lint are not in the... Um, oh, I forgot to tell you, I actually take, I actually cut, we'll talk a little bit about it at the end, but I actually cut these little pieces of paper and put them in the insert so I can take them out afterwards and it's a clear white insert. And I'll show you a little bit more about that in a minute. But you just want to make sure that everything's nice and fine. I take one piece of paper and set it on top and I'm gonna pre-press it for about 10 seconds. So we'll take this down and pre-press it, not complete pressure. And by the way, I do a lot of pressure on this, uh, on the sock. So about 10 seconds or so pre-press, pull this out. And then remember we had taken these and put them in the um, paper towel holder. So I'm gonna take them out and I probably left them a little bit long. They're actually a, a little, um, little bit too warped, but I take it and I align the, the paper, the sublimation paper, the little thing. I don't know if you can see that, but I, the reason I cut it is it's just so much easier to align it like that. And then I take that blowout paper and I set it down I'll slide this thing back in. And again, I've got pretty heavy pressure and I will push it down. I press at 400 degrees for 60 seconds. The reason this is 386 degrees is because my press runs a little bit hot. So 386 is actually 400. 
So we're about uh, 10 seconds left and um, we've got a bunch of them to do. We won't do all of them here. But we'll do this one and maybe one more and, um, and see how they come out. Now, one of the things that I'm gonna do is, is pull this up very carefully. One reason I don't know that I would like automatic presses, pull this up and then I, I give it like 10 seconds and then what I'll do is come in here and just take this piece of paper and lift it up, throw it away. And then I give it another few seconds because when it first lifts up off, when the heat press first lifts up, that's still really, really hot. So if you give it 10, 15 seconds to, to cool just a little bit, you're not gonna get the ghosting effect. And then I'll just push somewhere down in here, find a spot right there and pull it up. Another one, come in here, find a little spot and pull it up. So, there I have them, adorable, yeah, right? And I'm gonna set it aside, let it cool a little bit, and then we will, um, we'll talk about these inserts. So we'll do another, another few, make sure that we're getting the, the lint off, and I make sure my little piece of paper that's in there is covering the hole. And if, if something happens, it's a, sometimes it's a little off, you want to adjust it just a little teeny bit. Sometimes this top piece is, it's a little bit off. I'll, I'll adjust it again as before. Take another piece of paper and we'll press it light, light to medium press for about 10 seconds, basically just to get the, the cloth a little bit flat. Okay, so I've pre-pressed these just a little bit. See how it flattens them out a little bit more. I can actually see uh, my little piece of paper in there. Um, and I did use the lint roller, so we'll do what do you think? Purple? We'll do purple. So I'm gonna lay one down, lay another one down, and then I'm gonna line them up and line it up. I'll take my paper and put it back just like that. Hold my hand down. We'll push it in. Carefully lift up and push down. My pressure's pretty darn tight. I could probably do it a little bit lighter, but it is what it is. And mm, that's a little bit tight. I probably should loosen that some. So again, I'm gonna wait just a few seconds because if that piece of sublimation paper is really, really hot and I go and move it any and it shifts, it's going to, to ghost a little bit. So just give it a few seconds and then I will um, uh, uh, put my finger down to sort of lift that up, pull that up and then give it another, I don't know, five or 10 seconds or so. And then just as before, I'll just find me a spot that's lifting, pull it up. This one looks like it's already lifting, pull it up. And there you go, another set. And I will do a few more and then we'll go back and we'll recap. Okay, so I've pressed a lot of socks here. We're gonna do a little quick recap of uh, some of the things I wanna make sure you remember when you're doing it. Um, first off, definitely when you're, when you're taking the, um, uh, when you finished pressing, give yourselves 10 to 20 seconds before you lift that off. Because if you try to take it off immediately, or if you pull the press up really fast and that paper shifts, you're gonna have a chance of having some ghosting. So you don't wanna do that. Um, the, the, the ink pulled off really great. You can see that center area where it didn't um, uh, come off as much. Uh, I use Cosmos ink. I have a link in the description. And um, I have a, an old Epson Work 47710 that's been converted. Great colors. Okay, let's talk about the lint roller. So the first time I ever uh, did socks, I, <laughs> I was trying to clean it really well. I pressed down really, really hard and ended up pulling up some of the fibers. I don't know if you can see right there, there's a little teeny piece of lint. Those are the things that you're looking for to just lightly go in and see it's gone and that's what's on here. So you just wanna make sure you very lightly do it and get anything off that you um, uh, that may be on there. And then also, I, I did talk a little bit about it when we were pressing, but uh, I cut these, this is a, hard, a heavy card stock. You can use regular typing paper. I would just suggest doubling it over. Um, but what I do is I take this little piece of paper, I cut a bunch of them out, and then I put them into the sock insert like this. 
And then that way, when I press it, the ink is going on this little um, insert inside the insert. So let me show you what happens. This is what it looks like when I uh, first take it out. So I just pull that little piece out. Now tell me that doesn't look a lot better than that. Same thing, it's just a little bit cleaner when you, um, when you have it in the, uh, uh, in the packaging. I just think it's cleaner. So don't have to do it, but I do recommend it for uh, a nice finished um, product. I pressed at 400 degrees for 60 seconds. My temperature gauge showed 386 because that's 400 on my machine. But go by what Silky Sock says, at least at first, because they're the ones that know what they do. They suggest uh, 30 to 35 seconds, medium pressure at 400 degrees. So I did the 400 degrees. I had some pretty heavy pressure on there. I don't like the, the medium pressure, and here's the reason why. Sometimes when I would do medium pressure, I would get uh, right where this lip was, it wouldn't um, uh, sub, it'd be a little bit pale. And so I, um, uh, I like the heavier pressure on that. Um, I do 60 seconds. Uh, I actually uh, did one that was 40 seconds a little bit earlier tonight. I, I don't know why I think the dog was doing something and I had to run and grab it and it came out fine. Um, so I definitely always suggest when you get a new product, if you've got directions from the manufacturer, uh, go with those silky socks has been around and they know what they're doing. Um, and of course we talked about the, um, the inserts. Recap on silky socks. I've already said it. I'll say it again. Don't waste your time. Don't waste energy. Don't waste money going and getting a dollar tree or, um, or a family dollar. I had looked at dollar general. I actually, when I first started, I was scouting every place to find hundred percent poly, I think Ross, I found some, um, a bunch of different places. The reality though, is I spent so much time trying to get, uh, uh, save a couple of cents that I ended up wasting time and wasting money uh, trying to do it. And silky socks are brilliant. I mean, they come each pair. I'll go ahead and pull this out. They have their own insert. I just ship it with the insert. So, um, so you don't have to worry about that. I'm telling you, if you don't do anything else, if you're doing socks, use Silky Socks. Now, Dollar Tree or Family Dollar or something like that to test a couple out to practice on, absolutely. But when you're gonna sell them or you wanna give them to somebody that matters to you, definitely go with Silky Socks. Okay, dead horse, bam, bam, bam. Um, there are three sizes and I wanted to touch base with those. There are more sizes. I've only used the three sizes at Silky Socks, small, medium, and large. I take that back. I did get a package of extra large one uh, once and they were fine. They were extra large. Uh, I haven't got any of the, they have a, a extra small and I think an XX small. I haven't gotten those yet. I'll probably um, uh, get an extra small down the road just to see what it's like. But the, this is the small, here is the medium, and here is the large. So you can see there's a, a nice little difference uh, in those. Medium is what I mostly stock, and, um, and then I have some smalls and some larges. Let's see, what else do we have to talk about? Uh, some socks, some design thoughts. So these, well, let me go over real quick. Um, these, some of these colors are just awesome. The orange is fantastic. This red is great. Green, fantastic. The purple, I wasn't sure about the brown. I actually love the brown. Uh, this rainbow is, is, is really great. And then um, I have some camouflage uh, uh, colors. All of the designs that I have here that I'm using either are on my digital design website or will be soon. So if they're not there when you first go, uh, definitely uh, check back. Most of them I think will be there. Um, I did want to point a couple of things out though. Um, this is blue and this is teal. So they're very, very close in color. So I just wanted you guys to know that if you uh, uh, opt to purchase any of those files, one of the six packs of colors is the blue and one is the teal. And um, these are these. This came out really great. I'm gonna do a series of these. Um, the senior 
uh, class of 2023, I think came out really, really, really great. I love the, uh, the colors. I've got them with orange, uh, with this, this looks like almost like a greenish teal and with um, a yellow. And uh, this listing has all three of them in small, medium, and large. And you know, I was talking in the Facebook group about how you should position anything that's up here, because I've got a few that, that, that have something up here. And some people said you should have it oriented so the wearer can see it. And some people said you should have it you should have it oriented so the other people can see it. Here's the deal. You're not wearing these to the store. You're wearing them around the house. You're the one that's going to see them most of the time. So most often I'm putting them so they're oriented towards the person wearing them. And I know you want to show them off with other people, but, uh, but I, I like the idea of looking back and going, oh, I'm a senior class of 2023. A couple of things from a packaging standpoint, they already come with the packaging. I flip the packaging over and then I get this. Um, you can get smaller um, packages, but I get this uh, Avery, these Avery labels and I print out a, um, um, a bunch of stickers and then I'll take those stickers and peel them off. And then on this brown one, the side that's got the medium, I go on the back side where I flip this sticker over and I lay it on top of the opening. And that way um, nobody can go and open it up and take one out or try them on or whatever. It sort of seals it up a little bit. And I also have some little things that, that are hangers that I can hang them. Um, but anyway, they're a lot of fun. They are, uh, you know, the, the, um, the senior ones, great to give to, uh, to, as a gift to seniors. Is this the only thing I would sell at my shop? Absolutely not. But these and coffee mugs are in a good lower price point for what my wife calls grab and go. So get you some grab and go. Silky socks, don't forget, get your socks at Silky Socks. I'll leave a link in the description and um, uh, you can get the designs for me. I'll leave a link for the designs in the description as well as some of the other stuff I use. If you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe. Click that little notification bell so you will be notified when new videos come out. And we have a Facebook group, lots of really cool people. We keep it cool in there. There'll be a link uh, to join that as well. Please agree to the rules and answer the uh, questions and you'll be in like Flynn. So again, socks for the win. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. So I'm imagining that it's, I'm imagining that if you sell sublimation products, if you, <laughs> if you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe. And so I went to, I found Silky Silk. So I found Silk. So I found Silk. Really? Hey y'all, today we're going to sort.